how's it going folks? I've put together a couple of air pruning wicking gardens over the last couple of weeks and I thought I'd just bring you along and show you how a couple of them have gone together. Uh, air pruning for you guys who aren't too familiar with it, uh, it basically is a mechanism you can use um, to end up growing large healthy plants in a smaller container. Um, in our case we're using cloth root pouches. The roots from the plant will grow out to the outside of the pouch, they'll go through the porous fabric, basically die off or be pruned by the warm dry air on the outside and that triggers the plant to start a couple of new roots just at the base of the stalk there and they come out and being young roots they're more efficient at absorbing minerals and also moisture as well so it's a bit of a plus all round. The other bonus is because it's a container you don't end up with that pot bound root effect that you get in a normal plastic pot that doesn't breathe. Anyway I'll stop nattering on. Uh, to begin with I'll show you how I set up this one behind me here and then we'll go around and have a look at a couple of other gardens around the place and I'll give you a bit of an update on this one as well. So this little garden is set up at the base of our back stairs. On the back of the IBC tray I've attached some wire just to use as a trellis and that'll hopefully take the runners up rather than let them um, accumulate underneath the stairs and just on the small bit of paver work out the back there. The one problem that I can see us having here in South East Queensland is if I leave water in the base of this system for too long we'll have mosquitoes breed in there and just be overrun by the little blighters within a week or so. So the way I like to run this system is I fill it up with water, uh, probably an inch and a half. Uh, it will slowly wick up through the pouches and then yeah basically any mosquito larvae that are in there will die off and once I've noticed the pouches are drying out around the outside pretty easy to see where they're dark and where they're moist I can top the water back up again um, and just go through that cycle over and over I didn't have any problems with a mosquito plague last year so fairly confident we won't have one this year another way a lot of people mitigate that um, problem is to fill it up with gravel uh, just stops the mosquitoes from being able to get down to the water zone and yeah the downside is it doesn't hold as much water so anyway that's just a basic run through when the pouches themselves up the back here I will be putting in one pouch some sweet potatoes. The way I'm planning these guys out this year is a little bit different so I'll bring you in and give you a bit of a look. So just in the base of these pouches I have probably 75 mil, uh, 3 inches worth of cheap potting mix and on top of that I'll be putting our own homemade soil blend which is pretty much well two parts of the compost we've made over in the compost cage and one part the cheap um, potting soil. So um, that's pretty much all going to be what the plants grow in. No other additives at this point in time. Um, along the way I might give it a couple of doses of compost tea but that's pretty much all it. So with these sweet potato slips I'm planting them out a little bit differently this time. Traditionally what you do is you get your slip, you dig a bit of a trench in the ground and then you cover it up like that. Um, the reason you do that is at these uh, leaf nodes and branch nodes here this is where they're going to develop roots and send them down. If you lay it across the ground like this you're going to get a whole heap of sweet potatoes in theory form underneath which you can then harvest later. Uh, what I'm doing I'm going to plant them in vertically this time and we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully we'll have some nice sweet potatoes hanging off either side. We'll just wait and see. Um, it's, it's an experiment that'll take a couple of months but it'll be interesting. So all I'm doing is pretty much all just sticking them into this potting mix and then I'm just going to backfill around them with the soil mix. So that's pretty much well it for this pouch. Now what I'll do is when the plants grow probably about four or so inches or probably ten or so centimeters above the top of the pouch I'll come back top fill it again because some of this will settle down as well and then top dress with some mulch. So the pouch is filled up with a nice soil blend and I'm about to plant out four cucumbers. These guys came from a mate of mine, Reuben. Thank you very much mate. He comes up with some real little gems. Um, this one here is a cucumber, an F1 variety. It's a hybrid, um, hence the treatment on the seeds that you can see. Um, it's supposed to give small little short um, cucumbers, ideal for pickling and salads and that sort of thing. So I'm really interested to see how they work out. Just two on this side and two on this side and they'll be thinned down to um, the strongest one in each position. Just along the front of this pouch here I'm sowing out some Thai basil seeds I got from a local permaculturist Michael from Save Your Soil. Thank you very much mate. I thought I'd just take a small handful here and just sprinkle them over the top and just pat them in and that pretty much all should be enough for those Thai basils for at least one or two of them to germinate. I don't want all of them to germinate that's for sure. Um, just one or two and that'll just help shade out the front of this bed here. So the next two pouches to go in are a couple I'm planning 
I'm growing carrots in. So the soil blend I've made up for these carrots is a very light one. Um, carrots don't like uh, very heavy soil, that's when you end up with those gnarly, funky looking um, humanoid carrots. Um, this is very light and hopefully fluffy enough for the carrots just to push straight on through. Um, that's because I've used a lot more potting mix in this blend as well as sand. Uh, I've used a coarse river sand just to make it light and fluffy. I don't know if you can see the little grains in there, but yeah, hopefully the carrots will really love this blend. Um, two bags there. What I've done is I've mixed up a whole heap of leftover seeds. Um, just with a little bit of sand in this container. Um, when you're um, sowing out rows of carrots, a little container like this mixed with um, sand and your seed uh, makes it a really easy way to sow. Um, you just make a bit of a furrow and then just run this all the way along in the sand and the carrots mix and spill out. They don't give you even spacing but it's a little bit easier to manage than trying to plant individually. So you can see down in there the seeds, they tend to um, congregate together uh, with this coarser sand. Uh, probably work a lot better if I used a finer grade one. Just give it a bit of a shake and then I'm just going to sprinkle the top of these bags with the seed and sand mix. Now the seeds I'm using in here are actually a mix of leftover packets I've got. Uh, there's some Nance, some Atomic Red, um, there's a yellow one in there and I think a Lunar White as well. So all I'm going to do to cover these guys is get some compost, pop it in the little screen here and just give it a bit of a shake over the top and that'll just give us a nice loose covering straight over the top of the carrots. And the same for this one here. I might need to get some more compost actually by the look of it. Yeah, I think I will. It's great having all this compost on tap, I tell you. Just a bit of a shake. I don't think we'll use all of this compost. There we go. And that should be enough to carry the, cover the seeds. Um, with carrot seeds, I've planted them anywhere up to um, probably around about 10 mil or a centimetre deep, and I've had no problems at all. Um, so they should be fine. I'll give them a light sprinkling in the moment uh, when I water the rest of the pouches. Now I just need to fill the gap over here. So this is the last pouch to go into the tray. This is our sunshine chili, a very small little yellow um, hot pepper or chili. It's got a very, very fruity flavor, I suppose, is the only way I can really explain it. It's medium hot or to hot, depending on who you ask. We love it in all our dishes. It is our chili of choice, even though we grow a few others. So it is in obvious need of a bit of TLC. We have some new growth coming through here um, that's come on in the last month or so, even though we've been in winter. And what I want to do is take out some of these old scraggly um, branches that had fruit on them from last season and I don't know if you can make it out from up there but the plant has actually sunk probably what's that around about 15 centimeters half a foot um, into the pouch so what I'm planning on doing is giving it a good feed with some um, compost and hopefully it'll bring a bit of darkness back to the leaves because there's obviously some sort of deficiency going on in there so we'll give them a bit of a trim back and um, yeah we'll see how we go so I'm just taking off the dead wood at the extremities at the moment and then I'll go in and start snipping off some of the other branches. I just don't want to cut it back too far to begin with. So I'd say that's pretty much all it. So what I'm going to do is just grab this garden fork, slide it under the root mass and try and lift it up. There we go. And what I might do is backfill some compost down in there and then I'll pop this back in on top I think. I don't think that was too painful. We'll just backfill around the sides with some more compost. Just tuck him in. So there we go. That's pretty much all it. Now I'll just pop him straight into the bed. So I'm just giving them a light hit with the hose because I don't want to blast those seeds around just under the surface of the soil. Just filling up the tray now. And I've also drilled a couple of holes in the front just so any water can escape if we have a heavy rain event. It means that the roots won't become waterlogged and the plants won't drown. So now the only thing left to do is give the top of this bed here a bit of a light mulch. I don't want to mulch it too heavily, especially down the front here because those basil will want to uh, push their way through. But up the back here, they can go a little bit heavier. Uh, just the only other thing I'm going to mulch right now is just the chilli and the mint. So the mulch will not only stop the surface of the pouches from drying out, but it'll also provide food for the microorganisms and worms in the pouches. 
So down here with the carrot, uh, an old timer's trick was to put a hessian bag over the top. I'm sure my grandfather used to from memory. Um, I don't have any hessian bags spare at the moment, but I do have some manky old tea towels that I use as my hand towels downstairs. So I'm just going to drape that over the top and hopefully that'll stop the soil from drying out and it'll give the carrots a chance to germinate because they are fairly close to the surface. Um, I don't really want to put a barrier like a mulch down. Um, I've done that before and I found that the carrots couldn't push their way through so I'm just going to give that a bit of a light spray with water just to keep it moist as well um, and that's pretty much all it. The garden's sorted. Um, it doesn't look too attractive with the towel across there but yeah I think it'll help the carrots germinate. Uh, with the um, sweet potato as I said before um, I'll wait till they grow a little bit. Uh, a little a little bit higher before I backfill in there and then they'll end up getting a mulch at the end so I suppose that's pretty much all it. So it's been about two weeks since the pouches went into the tray and things are looking pretty good especially on this chili. We've got a fair few uh, new shoots coming off there hopefully we'll see some flowers soon. The mint is just loving it um, even though this is a, going to be a fairly sunny position once um, summer hits uh, hopefully this chili bush will give a little bit of shade to the mint so it'll do all right uh, down here. These carrots um, had a fantastic germination rate with these guys. A lot of them have come through. You might notice that the water down there is a little bit yellow. Uh, that tends to clean up once the, the plants start to use the water in the tray and it cycles through more often, so I'm not too concerned about that. Just over the back there, the sweet potatoes, they're all standing up. So I'll give them a couple more weeks and once they've grown over the pouches by a couple of um, inches or 10 centimeters or so, I'll top it all up with some soil and then mulch the top on there. Up the back here, um, we have three of the cucumbers that have germinated. There's actually two plants there. Um, they've only just got one of the seed leaf on each. Uh, and this one over here, that's just one cucumber. So we'll thin one of those guys out once we see how they're going to grow. Down in here, we got a whole heap of tomatoes that have germinated from the compost, but no basil that I've seen as of yet. It's, it's sort of funny because a lot of the tomatoes have germinated in there and not much in this one over here which is pretty much all the same um, compost mix. There are a few but nowhere near as many as in here so I'm pretty happy with the way this garden's going. Um, down the front here too just to let you know this is a coriander or cilantro plant. It's growing out of some pavers underneath the tray. I managed to um, not kill it while I was moving around down here and working and whatnot. Uh, it's got a whole heap of seeds that have set on there so we can harvest them and either use them to plant out uh, somewhere else in the patch or we can actually take them into the kitchen once they're dry, ground them up and there's some fresh coriander powder. One thing about this coriander that I've noticed is house flies and another small green fly really love the flowers. There's a couple buzzing around it at the moment. For some reason they're really attracted to the white flowers. Anyway, that's enough of that. We'll go over and have a look at some of the other pouch gardens. So just down here in the hoop house at the end of one of the wicking beds, I've set up a pallet, made it nice and level, just so I could put on three more pouches. And yes, I'm trying potatoes again. If you saw my last clip, we have pretty dismal potato harvest. So fingers crossed these guys will do better. There's a couple of reasons why I think they will do better. Uh, number one, we have the trays that will be holding water, making sure the, the soil in there is nice and moist. Um, I'm using 500 mil or roughly two foot diameter trays and in them I've just got some of the 30 litre root pouches. Um, probably a nice size tray for the shopping bags as well if you're trying out air pruning in the recyclable shopping bags. And in there I've plonked some soil and compost mix. It's a potting soil mixed with my compost. It's roughly about one third of potting mix and about um, two thirds of my compost. And in there I've planted out six potatoes, two in each. This time I'm using certified disease free potatoes unlike my last dismal attempt so hopefully fingers crossed they'll do a lot better. They were planted out last Saturday so they've only been in five days and I've seen a couple of them shoot through the surface so I'm pretty chuffed with that. So there's a couple of reasons I think these pouches are going to do a lot better. Uh, number one is they have a reservoir down the bottom uh, so I'll be able to keep a fair amount of water in there once it dries out top it up again same thing with the mosquitoes don't want too much standing water around. Number two they're in a position in the yard that I will be walking by at at least once a day when I do my walk around just to check on different plants. Uh, we've still got some tomatoes on the Werekawais up there that we're harvesting and right beside it here we have some snap peas in a large root pouch and they're doing phenomenally well so I do come down here a fair bit and if I do see that the water is running low in these trays I can just top them up so I think these guys will do a lot better than my last attempt at potatoes. So I'll just pop up and we'll have a look at the pouches I've got in the bathtub. 
Just up here in front of the aquaponics and the fish farm, we have another root pouch wicking garden. This one's been set up in the old bathtub that had the water chestnuts in it. It's a pretty basic concept, just like the other ones. Um, the bathtub creates a reservoir for the root pouches to sit in and the water wicks up through. So to set this one up, I had to modify the drain fitting. So I'll give you a bit of a quick look at how that was done. So what we have here is the drain to waste fitting for the bathtub. There's normally a little grate in there and the plug sits in there and it goes just in that hole over there like so water goes in there and out this threaded end down the drain so what I've done is I've taken it out and I'm going to flip it around so this will come in from the base and this threaded fitting will sit upright like this and then we'll turn the nut on and what that'll do is create a reservoir the water will fill up this threaded fitting until it reaches the top and then overflows now I don't want it as tall as that so I'm gonna to have to cut it down so the best way to do that I suppose is to place this in through the base and I'd say I want pretty much well about an inch and a half worth of water so just get my pen there, mark in there. So I've just cut off that extra bit I didn't need. Now what I've got here is a washer that will sit on the underside uh, to try and help make it watertight. So we'll just push him through. Then I've also got another washer that'll go on the inside here. Then just screw my little lock nut on. There we go. So now I've got a little 40 millimeter or inch and a half reservoir that I can sit the root pouches in. So in this tub we've got a few different plants. Down here we have a poor neglected bigelokia or ghost chili. Um, it was put aside for someone and it was never picked up but you know I'll take care of it. Over the back of it we have some duck potatoes just in the other pouch. Uh, they're also called arrowhead I think. They're a water plant so they'll be going out into a pond that hopefully we'll be setting up behind the lime tree. Down the front here a galangal. Um, this is one of the spice plants, a relative of ginger. Um, uh, it was on a piece that I harvested for dinner, decided to throw him in a pouch, let him live. Next to it we have our blue java banana. It was purchased the same time as our poor little decass over there, but the decass, um, it was dug out a couple of times by the chickens as they were scratching around the patch, so it had to be filled up um, with compost and replanted. And in the back, those two things there, they're Armenian cucumbers. Um, when we topped it up with compost, a uh, cucumber decided to shoot out, so we have a bit of a hitchhiker in there, we've just let it grow for now. And we have it on some clips, just running up some uh, baling twine on the um, frame there for the hoop house. We're happy to leave him be for the time being. So these bananas, they're just biding their time until we have the yard set up properly and then they'll be planted out in the ground. Um, they're in uh, biodegradable root pouches, so I could probably throw them in the ground or cut them off when we plant them out. So I'm fairly happy that they're going to stay healthy in there. As long as they get fed a nice, decent compost tea every now and then, they should thrive. Um, as soon as we've got a couple of cucumbers off this plant here, though I will pull it out because it will be sucking some of the nutrient away from that banana. So I'll pop down and I'll give you a quick look at our root pouch wicking barrel. So just here in the center of the backyard we have four wicking barrels at the end there we have a garlic, then we have lemongrass, then my dwarf lemon in a root pouch, and at the end a tomato I took pity on at the nursery and brought home. is doing rather well. Um, but this lemon is doing very well. I thought I'd actually um, done wrong by, by putting it into this pouch because it did nothing all winter. Then about three weeks ago it's just exploded into these small buds. Loads of fruit on, oh sorry, loads of flowers on I should say, and hopefully we might get a couple of fruit. Um, they say with citrus it's a good idea to take any fruit off in the first year just to let them get established but as this one is yeah, a dwarf tree I don't think I'm going to follow that rule this year um, yeah so I'm just going to let him go and we'll see whatever fruit we can get off him. In the base here is set up pretty much well like any of my other wicking barrels there's a reservoir made out of perforated drainage pipe or ag pipe and then there's a little pipe down there that feeds down to the reservoir directly so I can just top it up. Um, it's very very economical on water I've hardly had to water this thing at all so it's basically I suppose because the tree's been dormant all winter but now yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. I've had a couple of people ask me how this sort of um, root pouch wicking barrel would go. Um, honestly I, I don't know this is my first attempt at it so I'll get back to you in 12 months time but um, so far I can't see any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, I use my own compost blend in there and the leaves are all looking nice and healthy and just the amount of um, flowers that have set on there I'm pretty um, encouraged by that so I thought I'd just sneak in a bit of a quick look at that at the end. Um, a couple of people have asked me uh, when they've seen it in different photos so a bit of a look at the root pouch wicking barrel. 
So there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at the root pouch wicking gardens that we've got on the go at the moment here in the backyard. I'm pretty happy with the way they've been set up. Uh, the, the potatoes in particular, fingers crossed, we're going to get a much better yield out of them than we did from the last lot of pouch potatoes I grew. Uh, I think the little reservoir underneath them is going to help out a lot. Um, th these sorts of gardens, I think they're a fantastic idea for people who only have a small little area to garden in, whether you've only got a balcony, um, you live in a unit or a flat or that sort of thing, or you're in one of these newer more modern small block homes where you don't really have a lot of lawn or garden space these things you can grow an amazing amount of veg just out of a single pouch and you don't have to truck in a lot of soil and that sort of thing just a couple of bags of potting mix and some compost and you're on your way um, also too especially with uh, balcony gardening a lot of the time they're a bit of a heat trap depending on which way it's orientated so having a reservoir underneath them I think is a fantastic idea just keeps the moisture uh, level up in the soil the plants a lot happier and you don't come home from work to a lot of crispy fried veg on a hot summer's day so I think they're a good idea in that respect as for the sorts of reservoirs you can use pretty much all well, anything food safe is um, fair game as far as I'm concerned um, we've got the IBC tray the bathtub um, little pot plant trays also two barrels I'm gonna cut down a couple of barrels and use them as reservoirs Larry Hall over on his channel you know Larry he's a gent I saw first do this sort of gardening um, suss him out uh, he he uses kiddie pools, um, the little clamshell pools we get over here in Australia um, to pop his pouches in. So there's a whole different variety of reservoirs you could pretty much all use. So I hope you've enjoyed the clip and it's given you a couple of ideas you can use to grow some nice tasty fruit and veg in your own backyard. Uh, if this is the first time you've seen one of our clips feel free to subscribe. We also post clips on growing in wicking beds, aquaponics, chickens, compost making, that sort of thing. So you'll get an email every time we post a clip and you can come suss it out. Laura Keats will even say good day every now and then so feel free to leave any comments questions or suggestions you have in the comments section under the any of our clips and I'll get back to you where I can hope everyone is well and happy and I will catch you next clip cheers folks now the lorikeets are quiet always a good to have a lot of lorikeets today and I'm just upstairs. they don't attack you know they're not vicious uh, now the main reason I think my last noisy miners Shush. I suppose they are called noisy miners.